Welcome to Houston Christian University's commencement ceremonies honoring the graduates from the summer 2023 semester. Out of respect for this momentous occasion in the life of our graduates, we request that all cell phones be silenced now. Would you please stand and remain standing for the processional? Good morning. On behalf of the class of 2023 at Houston Christian University, we welcome you to the summer commencement ceremony. Please remain standing for the reading of the scripture passage by Valentina Gallego Silva and the invocation by Miriam Billing. Following the invocation, please remain standing for the singing of the hymn, Lead On, O King Eternal, led by Dr. David Kirkwood, chair of HCU's Department of Music, and accompanied by Mr. John Kirk, university organist. The words of the hymn, Lead On, O King Eternal, reflect HCU's mission and her central confession that Jesus Christ is Lord. Valentina and Miriam. This morning, I'll be reading Philippians chapter 1, verses 27 through 30. Only conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or remain absent, I will hear about you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel, and in no way alarmed by your opponents, which is a sign of destruction for them, but of salvation for you and this too from God. For to you it has been granted for Christ's sake, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer on his behalf, experiencing the same conflict which you saw in me and now here to be in me. Please pray with me. 
Lord God, thank you for the blessing of an education here at Houston Christian University. We are so grateful and blessed to be at a Christian university whose core values are rooted in your word. Thank you for favor in completing our degrees. We give you all the glory and honor for bringing us thus far in our lives and our educations. I pray that we will remember to seek you first in our lives every day through every decision, challenge, life circumstance, sorrow, and joy. We pray that in everything we do, we would give you all the glory and thanksgiving. Lord, I ask that you would make us and mold us to be vessels of your love to others. Help us to remember that we are a people who are blessed to be a blessing to others and help us to always turn to you when we need to be filled up again. Thank you for our faculty and their investment in us, for their love for you and their kindness towards us. It has been an honor to be taught by them and grow under their guidance. Jesus, most of all, thank you for coming to earth on our behalf, dying and rising again to save us from our sin and bring us back into union with you. I ask that you bless us all with peace and joy as we graduate, and I thank you for all those who have come today to celebrate us, for our family, friends, and all of the staff running this graduation. Thank you for guiding us this far, and we trust you with the future. We love you, and we commit ourselves to your loving care. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Please be seated. <clears throat> it is my pleasure to welcome you to these commencement ceremonies honoring the class of 2023. This morning's graduates represent those who have completed coursework since our last graduation ceremonies in May. It is a great joy for us to see so many families here today celebrating the graduation of their loved ones. It is a tradition for us to recognize the family members of the graduates who have helped make this morning possible by all your sacrifices, not only financial, but all the prayers, moral support, and encouragement you've given. 
If you are a member of the family of one of this morning's graduates, would you please stand and be recognized? The university, the university is guided by a board of trustees that is charged with the legal responsibility for the university. They are a blessing to all of us in the way they serve the students by offering godly counsel and leadership. We are honored to have several representatives of the university trustees present this morning. I'll ask them to stand as their name is called and remain standing. Please hold your applause until all have been introduced. The chair of our Board of Trustees is Reverend Gary Blackman. Also with us today, Reverend Willie Davis and Mr. Clois Smith. Thank you all. It is also my honor and privilege to recognize another very special person for the university, our First Lady, Mrs. Sue Sloan. Our special music this morning will be brought by Dr. David Kirkwood, chair of our Department of Music, and accompanied by Dr. Dan Kramlich, HCU professor of music. Following the special music, Dr. Robert Sloan, president of Houston Christian University, will bring his charge to the graduates. David, Dan. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my king take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee.
Take my will and make it thine. It shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own. It shall be thy royal throne. It shall be thy royal throne. It shall be thy royal throne. Dr. David Kirkwood and Dr. Dan Cramley. Thank you so much. What a blessing uh, to hear those uh, words of exhortation sung to us today. Graduates, congratulations. We're really proud of you. you get it all out of your system. Go ahead. <laughs> You, we, okay, I regret saying that now. <laughs> no, you are, you are absolutely right to be enthusiastic and joyful because this is a fabulous day. It's a great milestone day. It's a day that marks out uh, a, 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 a series of years of accomplishments. And, uh, and we're proud as a university to have these as our graduates because we believe that they will be a light to the world. We believe that they will be an influence in the world. We believe that they will carry the cause of Christ and the cause of all things good and true and right and beautiful out into the world. And that's the kind of education we've wanted to provide. And so graduates, I have, a, I think, a fairly simple charge for you today. I want to ask you to live in a way that's consistent with what you've learned here at this Christian university. You've learned what it is to be competent. You've learned what it is to be knowledgeable. You've learned information and facts. But you've also learned an overarching worldview that is, that is captured in the confession that Jesus Christ is Lord. I challenge you, I charge you to bring all things in your life, all that you can think and say and live and do, all that you know, all that you understand, your relationships, your vocation, your work. Bring it all under the lordship of Jesus Christ so to live faithfully to him. That's the kind of thing that Paul asks in that passage uh, in Philippians that was read earlier. Paul is not sure whether he'll get to see the Philippians again, and so he concludes this opening section. He's talking about the prospect of his own death. In some ways, he prefers to die. He says to depart and be with Christ. That's very much better. And yet he believes that he will remain on uh, alive so that he can come to see the Philippians. But he says whether he comes or doesn't come, he wants to hear about them that they have walked in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. We, we may not get to see you on campus much anymore. We may not actually have personal relationships. You'll change uh, perhaps some of your networks, certainly with students. It may be that your vocation will take you somewhere else. But may we hear of you that you are walking worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We want you to be a people whose, whose lives make a difference. You can do all kinds of things in this life. You can do, um, have all kinds of achievements and awards and accolades. You can make all kinds of money, but I'm going to tell you, if it's not submitted to God through the Lordship of Jesus Christ, it will be a waste, and your life will not come to the end that God wants you to experience. We... And so I challenge you, live up to all that you know that's good and true in the person of Jesus Christ. Walk worthy of the gospel. And then one other word, and that is um, that you're going to have conflict. Twelve years earlier, from the time that Paul wrote to the Philippians, 
He and Silas first came to Philippi. It's about the year 49 AD, and you can read this story out of Acts chapter 16. He, they come to Philippi. They bring the gospel there. They first introduce the gospel to some women who have formed a, a, a place of prayer down by a river. And a merchant woman, a wealthy woman by the name of Lydia of Thyatira, is converted through the preaching of Paul and Silas. And she offers hospitality to them. She was wealthy enough. She apparently had a villa so the entire team could stay uh, in, her, in her dwellings. And, um, but within a very short time, after those initial successes at preaching the gospel, Paul and Silas uh, are accused by the city leaders of being unpatriotic. They are not being patriotic to the Roman gods uh, they are not being patriotic to the Roman authorities. They are, and the city authorities and leaders claim that these two men, Paul and Silas, are preaching a superstitious message which it is not lawful for us to believe being Romans. They are saying that Jesus is Lord, not Caesar. They are saying that the good news is not the good news of the far-flung spread of the Roman Empire, but it's the good news of the gospel of God that has come through Jesus Christ. They're saying that uh, while the Philippians may prize greatly, take great value in the Roman citizenship they have, that they have another kind of citizenship. Their citizenship, he tells them later in Philippians, is from heaven, from which we eagerly await a savior, a soter. Uh, Nero had called himself savior and soter, but, but Paul declares that Jesus is the savior of all the earth. And so Paul tells them that... Uh, that and, and the city authorities under Roman authority have Paul and Silas beaten with rods at the city gates. Paul was a Roman citizen, but he didn't have time apparently to make that claim because uh, the magistrates ordered that they have many stripes administered to them. They were viciously beaten. Then comes the story of the conversion of the Philippian jailer and on and on. For the next 12 years, Paul and Silas preached the gospel all around Turkey and Greece and the Roman province of Asia. And then Paul ends up in a Roman prison, and now the Philippians have sent him a gift of money. And so he, he writes to the Philippians to thank them for that gift of money, but he says, I want you to walk worthy of the gospel. If I get out of prison and see you, or if I don't, walk worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because you are now experiencing the same conflict which you saw in me. They saw him beaten. And now here, they know that he's in prison still to be in me. Walk worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but I promise you, while there are many joys and blessings, and Paul makes it very clear that the outcome is one of salvation from God. The outcome on the last day of human history, on the last day of judgment is clear. You'll be a child of God. You'll be blessed. You'll be, you'll be lifted up into the presence of God. You'll experience joys unimaginable because you know God through Jesus Christ but you'll experience conflict here and now. You are now experiencing the same conflict. I want to tell you, have moral courage. Stand for the truth. Stand for what's right. Stand for what's honorable. Be a person of faith even when those around you don't encourage it. In fact, maybe even discourage it. God bless you. We are proud of you. We are happy to send you forth because you've learned much You've attained much. Today we celebrate the awarding of these degrees, but we challenge you. Have moral courage in living in a world of conflict and walk worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dr. Sloan. The academic year 2023-24 marks the university's 63rd year of operation and its 58th year to award degrees. What began as an idea in the heart of our founding fathers led to the establishment of Houston Baptist College in 1960. With a strong foundation to build upon, the institution has become the renowned, national, comprehensive university it is today. Keeping Christian principles at the forefront, the university has retained its character as it has grown. We look to the past with gratitude and pride, and we look to the future with eager anticipation. 
We will honor 144 graduates from the summer semester in this morning's ceremonies. This brings the number of students who have received degrees from Houston Christian University since our first commencement in 1967 to a total of 25,659 graduates. We will be assisted in the awarding of the degrees this morning by Reverend Gary Blackman, Chair of HCU's Board of Trustees, by the deans and faculty of our colleges and schools, and Mrs. Donna Stallings, the Director of Academic Records. All of the candidates for various degrees who have completed degree requirements as of the end of the summer term are listed in your program, although not all are able to be with us this morning. It is permissible and quite customary at these ceremonies for you to applaud each candidate for the degree as each name is called. Dr. Sloan, Reverend Blackman, could you please join me at the podium? And now will all the candidates for the bachelor's degree or certificate please stand. Uh, Reverend Blackman, as of the end of the summer term, these students will have completed all the requirements for the bachelor's degree or certificate from Houston Christian University. The faculty and I recommend that you confer the bachelor's degree or certificate upon them. Dr. Sloan, on the recommendation of the faculty and the Board of Trustees, we authorize to confer the bachelor's degree or certificate upon these candidates. Thank you. <clears throat> then as recommended by the faculty and now authorized by the Board of Trustees, it's my great privilege hereby to confer upon you the bachelor's degree or certificate that you have earned with all the rights and privileges that pertain to it. Congratulations. God bless you. Thank you. you. May be seated. Will all the candidates for the master's degree or certificate please stand? Reverend Blackman, as of the... Uh, <laughs> As of the end of the summer term, these students will have completed all the requirements for the master's degree or certificate from Houston Christian University. The faculty and I recommend that you confer the master's degree or certificate upon them. Dr. Sloan, on the recommendation of the faculty of the Board of Trustees, authorizing the conferred of the master's degree and certificate on these candidates. Thank you, Reverend Blackman. Then is authorized now by the faculty and certified by the Board of Trustees, it is my great privilege hereby to confer upon you the master's degree or related certificate that you have earned. Congratulations and God bless you. Thank you, you may be seated. And now will the candidates for the doctoral degree please stand. Reverend Blackman, these students have completed all the requirements for the doctoral degree from Houston Christian University. The faculty and I recommend that you confer the doctoral degree upon them. Dr. Sloan, on the recommendation of the faculty as the Board of Trustees, we authorize the conferring of the doctoral degree upon these candidates. Then now as recommended by the faculty and authorized by the Board of Trustees, it's my great privilege to confer upon you the doctoral degree that you have earned with all the rights and privileges that pertain to it. Congratulations. God bless you. Now, will, will all of the bachelor's graduates from Archie Dunham College of Business please stand and come forward to be recognized? The hoods worn by the HCU graduates are distinctive to Houston Christian University by the orange and blue satin with which they are lined and by the color of the velvet trim which indicates the academic discipline being recognized. On the faculty's academic gowns and hoods, you will see a variety of colors. These colors indicate the faculty's doctoral disciplines and institutions. In addition to the caps, gowns, and hoods worn by the graduates and faculty, other devices used in today's commencement exercises emphasize our connection to the grand tradition of higher education. The mace, carried by the President of Faculty Assembly, is an ancient symbol that represents the authority of the university to teach and award degrees. 
so also is the seal that the president wears. Both of these remind us that education is not simply a commodity to buy and sell. It is a sacred trust we engage in to serve God and others. It is my pleasure to present the graduates from the Archie W. Dunham College of Business, receiving the Bachelor of Arts degree, Frankie J. Benitez. Ricardo Mauricio Flores. Sumaya Yasmin Kanon. Luis Antonio Luna Jr. Maj Doman Sadiq. Receiving the Bachelor of Business Administration degree, Juan C. Becerra. Chastity K. Carrion, magna cum laude. Valentina Gallego Silva, summa cum laude. Marlon Garcia. Lauren Taylor Montalvo. Gerald S. Mandacle. Bryce James Tony, cum laude. Abraham Valdez. Receiving the Master of Business Administration degree. Oyeyimi Akinreme. Jada Carey Allen. Brandon Lane Botkin. Nathan Burke. Niles Nehemiah Dixon. Vernon Craig Harold II. Heather Quinsonberry Jacobs. Caton Elizabeth Solano. David Jerome Streetick. Receiving the Master of Science degree. Olumu Yoyibe A Yodidiji A De Kele. Terracine Finier. Katrin Wright. Robin Jeanette Nicole Kylan. Kandra E. Marshall. July Andrea Medellin. It is my pleasure to present the graduates from the College of Arts and Humanities, receiving the Bachelor of Arts degree, Dellen Marquis Bradshaw Settle. <laughs> Joshua Lloyd St. Paul Chavance. <laughs> Dustin Sadanala Hesudasan. Adelise Padilla. Crystal May Quintana. Enrique Noah Quintana. Will Joseph Ripple. Daxton Tinker. Receiving the Bachelor of Fine Arts degree, Miracle Antoinette Miller. Lindy Aniston Swanson. 
receiving the music degree, Miriam Bethany Billing, summa cum laude. Receiving the Master of Arts degree, Aaron Baca. Receiving the Master of Fine Arts degree, Alyssa Rachel Savannah. Receiving the Master of Liberal Arts degree, Eliana Marie Wilhelm. It is my pleasure to present the graduate from the College of Science and Engineering, Kevin Lee Doan, cum laude. It is my pleasure to present the graduates from the School of Christian Thought, receiving the Bachelor of Arts degree, the next graduate has the honor of possessing the highest GPA of the summer's graduating class, Stacy Karchner Arguello, summa cum laude. Alec Zechariah Rodriguez. Receiving the Master of Arts degree, Courtney Allison Bradford. Elizabeth Cruz. Keith Anthony Garvin. Trevor Howell Harris. Monica Y. McGaskey. John D. Okoro. Receiving the Master of Divinity degree, Francine L.V. Williams. It is my pleasure to present the graduates from the School of Nursing and Allied Health. Receiving the Bachelor of Arts degree, Justice Isaiah Artiste. Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree, Veronica Aguirre. Charlie Renee Baham. Anna S. Brissino. Daniela Hernandez. Nicole V. Zalazar, cum laude. Kayla Crishaw Wilson, cum laude. Receiving the Master of Science degree, Eric Richard Levinston. Receiving the Master of Science in Nursing degree, Alicia Dokush Bione. It is my pleasure to present the graduates from the College of Education and Behavioral Sciences. Receiving the Bachelor of Arts degree, allow me, Bailey. <laughs> Brianne N. Blancet. <laughs> Bryant Farkerlin. <laughs> Haley Dolores Hurd. Akela M. Jackson, magna cum laude. Ashlyn Davies. Nanette N. Cadiz. Oloafan Mileo V. Olatunji. Camila Palomino. Jose F. 
Freddy Peralta Jr. Adriana Nicole Rangel. <clears throat> Receiving the Master of Arts degrees, Shaterika Elvarado. Amaka Bari Nuzug. Brittany Shanice Blanton. Tamara Lynn Caesar. Karina Evelyn Chidez. Madeline Paige Cross. Daisha D. Curry. Myra Davis. Amy Rosemary Flores. Gabriela A. Flores. Jonathan D. Foster. Carol Marie Freelon. Taylor Elizabeth Gaucher. Monica Gola. Elnaz Hamedi. Christina Hopkins. Rex Miguel Howard Jr. <laughs> Adiola Funmilola Ibenemi. Lorencia Vivi Wonkwa. Angela Marie Peru. Trevor Ewing St. Dennis. Receiving the Master of Education degree, Lizeth Catherine Cardenas. Ebony Princess Cockrell. Taranisha Nicole Janae Geralds. Tanisha T. Johnson. Ladesia Monet Lee. Jason E. Montgomery Sr. Brogan Marie Nunez. Sharon Analawapo Ogendeko. Receiving the Master of Science degree, Gerald Tyrone Dolphus. <clears throat> Receiving the Doctor of Education degree, Kathy Lynn Jones Banks. Kelly Marie Brode.
Dakonda Lynn Kendall. Tiffany Ann King. Renota Rogers. No. who now serves at Passages as a Vice President. Ashley is the Vice Chair of the HCU Alumni Association Advisory Board. She will welcome our graduates to the HCU Alumni Association. Ashley. Good morning. I am greatly honored and privileged to represent the HCU Alumni Association this morning and to share in this significant moment as these students on the stage make the formal switch between students to alumni of Houston Christian University. Graduates, please stand. At this time, please take the tassel and move it from right to left, and let me be the first. <laughs> to formally congratulate you and welcome you officially to the HCU Alumni Association. <laughs> Finally, finally, there is one additional group of individuals whom we wish to recognize this morning on behalf of our graduating class. These are my colleagues who comprise the staff and faculty of the university. Will the university staff and faculty please stand and be recognized? Thank you. The planning and production of the commencement ceremony requires many hours from many people to whom we are also grateful. 
On behalf of the graduates, I should like to thank each of you for your presence, which has helped make this ceremony a very happy occasion. We will conclude with a benediction given by Keith Garvin and the singing of the alma mater, led by Dr. David Kirkwood and Mr. John Kirk. Please stand, Keith. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth who have set your glory above the heavens. We praise you, Heavenly Father, as David did in the eighth Psalm. We give you all the praise, honor, and thanks for allowing us to celebrate this day of achievement. We have so much to thank you for, including the opportunity to learn and grow in order to walk in the will you have set for our lives. We thank you for the professors and faculty and staff who have provided their guidance, time, and knowledge. We thank you for our classmates whom we have had the chance to learn and grow with along the way. Thank you for an academic community that has Jesus in the very fabric of its mission and goals. We also thank you for the love, sacrifice, and support of parents, siblings, grandparents, spouses, children, and guardians whom you have helped place by our side as we embarked upon this academic journey. As we leave, we pray that we have learned what we have learned will be used to bless your name and bless all those whom you bring into our paths from this point on, giving you the glory in the end, the beginning, and everywhere in between. We pray this and all these things in the name of your precious Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. In the great state of Texas, Houston, USA, stands our noble alma mater, Christ saying, I am the way. In our search for knowledge, tempered with thy love, seeking our place of service with wisdom from above. Give us courage, strength, and faith to face a world filled with fear. Ever onward to the challenge, knowing thou art near. God bless our school, keep her safe and true. God bless our alma mater.